Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel and if it's the first time you've popped along to the channel, well, you're in for a treat because it's the A to ZX of the spectrum, so you're in for some 8-bit glory. But before we do that, I've got a very special shout out. It's for one of the fans of the channel now. Who knew this channel has fans? But not only fans, but probably the youngest ever YouTube fan ever. So let me introduce you to Elsa Field, I have a fan that's not even won yet, but you know what, fantastic taste in YouTube channels, and Elsa, you just keep on watching. Anyway, let's get to the heart of the matter, and that is the A to Z, X of the spectrum, and today's letter, well, it's the letter D, because I have managed four of these, you know, so that's quite remarkable for the attention span that I'd normally have on this channel, so... Hold on, and let's run those titles. Now I'll be the first to tell you I'm not a big sports guy, not even in video games, but there are a few titles that did grab my attention, especially back in the day, and one of them of course was Daley Thompson's Decathlon, released by Ocean in 1984 and it was the first track and field clone I'd ever played on an 8-bit home computer. Decathlon was a multi-event athletic simulator and of course, like all other track and field clones, it was an absolute joystick or keyboard destroyer. And why? Because the method of controlling the game was quite simple. One button for left foot, other button for right foot, and another button for jump. Or, on your joystick, you had to waggle left and right as fast as you possibly could to build the speed you required for whatever event it was, with occasional events requiring the fire button either to jump or throw. Now despite being so simple, so basic you might say, it was so very addictive and one of the earliest examples of couch competition that ever entered my life. And despite its age and how basic it looks today, I can still happily sit down and play Daley Thompson's Decathlon, and so can a good few of my friends. Now not every game can be a banger as the kids might say, and Disco Dan unfortunately was one of those unfortunately truly bad games released for the ZX Spectrum. Now many ZX Spectrum games and games from the 8-bit home computer era had multiple stages, with varying gameplay just to, to break up the monotony and make a game just a little bit more interesting. Disco Dan however had only two such gameplay changes. In the first section of the game you're running down a corridor, jumping over laser beams and avoiding holes. Well, they're what I assume were holes, although you never did fall down them, they, they would just take your energy. And of course, on occasion, the dreaded creature, a smiley face, kind of reminiscent of Evil Otto, would also come hurtling down the corridor to try and damage Dan as he progressed towards the second part of the game. The second part of the game, and the only other style of gameplay, was when you reached the reactor, and this was pretty much a Qbert clone, jumping from disc to disc, which would decrease the number on the disc, and the goal of course, to get it down to zero, because these were the reactor rods as they were starting to overheat, so Dan has to furiously hop on each one of them, cooling them down to the safe green zero while avoiding some strange elemental creature that is also making its way around the maze. Now once a disc reaches six, it will eventually become solid red and can't be changed back. And to win this stage, each and every disc has to be green, with the exception of course of those that had turned solid red. And of course, if you managed to complete this mind-numbing Qbert clone, you went straight back to the corridor and repeated the process again, but this time just slightly faster. Now back in the day you were limited to the games that you had, and this game, well I played it to death because it's what I had, but if you have an option, just avoid Disco Dan. Now from one truly awful game to one truly fantastic game, and not just a fantastic game, a fantastic series of games. And as you might have noticed, I've taken a bit of a liberty here, because the actual title of this game is Treasure Island Dizzy, not Dizzy Treasure Island. 
but there's so many dizzy games on the ZX Spectrum, I thought the best way not to saturate the lists that were coming in the future was to pick one and put it in the letter D. Now as I've said, the game is fantastic, but it's also extremely frustrating. The Dizzy Games, well, the mainstay of the Dizzy Games were puzzle platformers where you had to work out exactly what item you needed and where you needed to put it just in order to progress. And of course I'm not going to lie to you, it was never that obvious. I honestly can't remember how many countless hours that I managed to put into the Dizzy Games without managing to make any progress whatsoever. And of course back in the 1980s there was no internet for you to quickly hop on and Google a solution. You had to hope that you stumbled upon the solution yourself or perhaps a friend had managed to complete a section that you were stuck on. But despite the frustration, well, you still had to play. The controls were tight, the physics of the game were fantastic and of course it was part of a long running series. Dare I say it, Dizzy was one of the first mascots, especially for the ZX Spectrum. And if you get a chance, well play it today because at least you'll have the internet to get you past those more tricksy puzzles. Now if there's one thing that's worse than a bad game, it's a bad licensed game. And the reason for that is, the developers or publishers have taken a beloved title from either movie, book or in this case a kids cartoon and made a terrible, terrible game. Knowing that kids will really want to go out there and play Danger Mouse, which we did. And it's a shame that this game is quite so bad, because looking at the screen here, well it looks quite interesting. You have a vertical scrolling shooter, a nice little countdown to see how long you've got to travel before you get to the next stage and of course an amusing first person view of what Danger Mouse and his sidekick Penfold are seeing from the car. But the gameplay itself, truly awful and mostly this is just down to the controls which is something that all developers should have just focused on from the start. Now like most Spectrum games this has more than one stage and after the flying car stage we move on to the jungle and in the jungle well it's pretty much a pitfall rip off. In this stage we're guiding Danger Mouse and Penfold through the jungle by either jumping over ponds full of crocodiles or trying to climb trees that are infested with monkeys and snakes. Now the monkeys will help you up branch to branch but if you hit them on the trunk as you're trying to climb, they will knock you straight back down to the bottom. But I can only assume the panther at the bottom is waiting there to eat you up. And you have to do several levels of this jump the crocodile, climb the tree, until you get to the next stage. Now from what I can recall and what I've managed to play recently, there were only three stages. The car, the jungle, and then you moved on to the final stage, which was a puzzle where you had to destroy the machine that was creating a android danger mouse. Hence the title of the game, Double Trouble. And if you didn't manage to defeat the machine by solving the puzzle in time, well, the android Danger Mouse was unleashed and would chase you to your doom, no doubt. But I honestly can't remember ever getting to the end of this game. But like I said at the beginning, the developers and publishers played on our love for this character back in the day and we had to buy it and we had to play it. And as often as the case, this was the only game we had for quite a while. So bad developers, don't make bad games with beloved characters. And Danger Mouse and Double Trouble was a bad game with beloved characters. Now the last game we're going to look at in the letter D for the ZX Spectrum is the outstanding Double Dragon. Now I say outstanding because it was in the arcades and it also was in other ports. And I don't want to be too rough on the ZX Spectrum port, but this truly was pushing the machine to its limits. Not only did we have a two-player brawler, we had a two-player brawler that was so beloved in arcades that any sort of home microcomputer port wasn't quite going to live up to the standards. Now don't get me wrong, what they managed to do with the game was quite remarkable. And where we've looked at games that are just bad games, this was a game that was just pushing a machine to its limits. The time, love and dedication that the developers had to have put into the controls for this game are beyond my imagination. Granted the graphics aren't fantastic and of course you have the classic ZX Spectrum colour bleed. But little niggles like this, well, they're not worth dwelling on. 
not considering that they managed to get a double dragon port in the first place. And not only a double dragon port, a port of the game that was actually playable by not one, but two players. Now if this was one of the games that you had spent your hard earned pocket money on back in the day, well, you were quite happy to stick at this for a while. And not only that, your friends could get involved too. So for the last game in D, we have Double Dragon, and it gets a big thumbs up. It might not be perfect, but at least the developers this time put enough care and attention into the game to make it playable. And that's truly what we all asked for back in the day and even now. So if brawlers have ever been your thing, then I can heartily recommend getting your hands on a port of the ZX Spectrum Double Dragon and playing that just to see what good developers could do with limited resources. So there you have it folks, five masterpieces from the ZX Spectrum, 8-bit classics every one of them and I hope you enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed going back and playing them and I haven't played some of these in well over a decade, well maybe even over two or three decades, but anyway, thank you very much for watching and of course give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content and of course if you're not already subscribed to the channel, well that subscription button is always there for you and more importantly well comment if you played 8-bit microcomputers back in the day I'd love to chat about it down in the comments and of course if you've never seen an 8-bit microcomputer before well I'd love to chat about that too so until next time well you could watch some of this guy over here this is Gibby 4 gaming and he's quite possibly our next youtuber of the month so pop him over a visit but from here however thank you very much again and cheerio